We have a shocking Spurs update that reveals the San Antonio Spurs might be turning that corner on their rebuild a lot faster than we're expecting. Obviously, we saw they picked up guard Chris Paul after he was waived from the Golden State Warriors, but new reports are indicating that they are interested in trading for Lori Markkinen. And Jack, after the NBA draft, after they selected Castle, they brought in Chris Paul. They have Victor Wembanyama and Devin Vassell already on the roster, along with some solid role players. If they bring in Lori Markkinen, even for next season, I know it usually takes a couple of years for guys to come into the NBA and blossom and come into their own. If they construct this roster, if they execute on this master plan, it is going to be ridiculous for the San Antonio Spurs. So before we dive into the, the reports about Laurie Markkinen, let's dive into what's already gone down because, again, the Spurs are in a really nice spot right now at this point. So basically, we had a report come out saying that free agent guard Chris Paul has agreed to a one-year $11 million plus deal with the San Antonio Spurs. And Jack, in the, this in its own right, Again, we watched Victor Wembanyama play last season with, you know, Jeremy Sochan at the point guard spot for a large chunk of last year. He's another guy that's going to develop and be awesome for this team in the future. But having a lob threat, I know CP3 is old, is just going to unlock so many different things out there on the offensive end for the Spurs. And then obviously Castle, who isn't the craziest of playmakers out of college, but again, wasn't integral piece to a championship winning NCAA squad they added a couple of playmakers to this San Antonio Spurs team and that's going to do a lot in terms of unlocking Victor Webb and Yama not even to mention the pot potential possibility of trading for Laurie Markkinen yeah Ben I think firstly this having a that presence of CP3 that leadership is going to help the entire roster not just mm -hmm. Webby but I'm going to be really excited to see those pick and rolls with Wemby, Wemby and CP3. And I think he's going to help a lot of the young guards too. Cause I, I know one of the criticisms of the Spurs as a whole was that they weren't getting Wemby the rock enough throughout the season. And then it started to get a little better with Trey Jones, but honestly they weren't getting the ball enough, but now bringing in CP3, I think he's going to do wonders in pops uh, system as well too, but it's going to be really exciting for Wemby and for CP3 and for the whole team as well too. Yeah. Chris Paul playing for the Spurs just makes a ton of sense. And again, his stats aren't on another level. He hasn't been ridiculous this season, right? Or this season past. Nine points per game, four rebounds, seven assists. But again, he's playing on a team with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson. And uh, even though those guys are older as well, just less touches. He's going to be a, a focal point now as the, the point guard for this team. I imagine he's going to be starting over Trey Jones. I don't think he went there to, to be a bench piece. He's still <laughs> a mentor and stuff. But him and Castle in the backcourt, it's going to be a very intriguing sort of opportunity to play alongside of Victor Wembanyama for people don't know, right? Rookie season at 19 years of age. He's 20 now. But for a large chunk of the season was 19, averaged 21 points per night, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 3.6 blocks per game, 1.2 steals. Somehow at 7-4, shot 33% from behind the three-point line. He shot 54%. This dude was hitting over half of his threes from the corners, shot 46% from the field. It's just one of the best basketball players in the world already and didn't have a point guard getting him the rock. So again, the league should kind of be afraid. The league should be a bit shook, you know, if uh, this deal ends up, uh, well, with Chris Paul, obviously, being on the team castle, just more guys that can facilitate and get things going for Victor Wembanyama. But Jack, at, people saw mm -hmm. the thumbnail, people looked at this and uh, the reports that could just really shake up the NBA, much less the San Antonio Spurs, but would strike fair in the entire Western Conference is the Warriors along with the Spurs are trying to make a trade for Laurie Markkinen. Now, Laurie Markkinen, again, you might look at him and say, oh, I haven't seen him since the Bulls. Maybe you don't watch the Jazz. They haven't been a great team. But basically, this dude has become an elite elite basketball player out there in the NBA averaged 23 points per game last season 8.2 rebounds two assists per game shot 40 percent from the three-point line 44 percent from behind the three is seven foot himself that would be a tall that would be a floor space and that would be a rebounding front line if Lori Markin ends up going to San Antonio where no news has come out that the Utah Jazz are trying to make this type of deal happen Jack how are you feeling if the San Antonio Spurs actually end up landing Laurie Markkinen right now? I am pretty biased, Ben, because I have Laurie Markkinen on my fantasy team. And for those of us that had him in fantasy, he's an absolute killer. Before, he started to get injured towards the end of the year. So I think that messed up his stats a little bit. But he was cooking for the Jets. He was by far their best player. He was carrying that team. And I think that backcourt of Wemby and Laurie is absolutely ridiculous. I, I honestly think it could be 
it's one of the top backcourt, not only in the West, but in the entire league. And I, it would be – both those guys can shoot. They can both play in the paint. With CP3, they, they fit perfectly as a trio. So they – this Spurs team, if they can get – pull that off and then have some of the younger guys as well too, it's going to be – they're going to be a problem. They're going to be they're going to be an emerging team in the West. That is an all star front line. Lori Marketing kept the Jazz straight up from tanking. Like Lori Marketing yeah. is the reason He's underrated. That, that team did not go into complete rebuild mode. But again, they trade him away for picks, and the San Antonio Spurs have a ton of picks. They have a ton of young pieces out there on that roster. I mean, we can look at their sort of roster. Keldon Johnson's kind of the the piece, the guy that would try to make the salaries match under this. You know, I'm not sure if Devontae Graham is still as the free agent side of things out there at this point. But mm -hmm. basically, you know, you make Keldon Johnson there, you add the picks. The Spurs have the assets. They have those long-term pieces. I mean, they just traded for a couple of long-term, uh, what, 2020, 30, 2030 and 2031 uh, picks from the Minnesota Timberwolves, which project to be pretty valuable, just given the historical record of uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves there. But again, they could be good with Ant and Cat out there in the future. But they have some Hawks picks. I know they had the Raps pick from this season. But the Spurs are just loaded with draft capital. And the Utah Jazz, they're trying to accumulate all of those draft assets since they made those moves with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, right? The Utah Jazz might be uh, very bullish on just Timberwolves picks because they got a ton in that uh, Gobert trade and then might be projecting further for the future. So the Spurs have the assets to be able to get this done. They have the contracts to go back and the interesting prospect, you know, piece of a uh, Keldon Johnson who hasn't worked out tremendously there despite showing flashes of a guy that's very, very solid for that San Antonio Spurs team. But Jack, again, some people might be saying, hey, it's a little bit too early. Maybe you want, don't want to go all in on Lori Markin versus, you know, a, a guaranteed top 10 superstar to put around Wemby. But frankly, I'm of the mindset. You have a guy like Victor Wembanyama. The stats, we just mm -hmm. looked at them. He's putting up that, those types of numbers. You don't want to waste a single season, especially with Greg Popovich. We're not sure how long he's going to be interested in coaching. He's still one of the greatest basketball minds. You know, in NBA history, yep. man, running your bench. I don't think you waste any seasons. You have Chris Paul at that point guard spot. Again, you're not really rushing things because you still have a ton of draft picks. And, you know, you have uh, even beyond a Laurie Markin trade. It depends how much you'd have to give up. But you have Chris Paul. You have Castle. You have Vassell. You know, you have Socha. And you have so many guys, you know, in this Spurs roster that... You can make a push mm -hmm. in the West. I won't say they're better than the Mavs who just picked up Clay Thompson or, you know, the Nuggets probably or the Oklahoma City Thunder, but they're probably up there. You know, they're they're a seasonal yeah. A then at that point to, you know, definitely be a playoff team in the West. Do you think it makes sense to, I don't want to say go all in, but go, you know, 70, 80% in this season, Jack, or should they hold their cards, tank another season, whatever you want to call it, or, uh, you know, just go ready all out with Victor Wembanyama. Ben, because they picked up CP3, and like you said, yeah. we don't know how much time CP3 has left. He likely only has one to two years left. Popovich as well, too. Who knows how much longer he's going to be coaching. They need to act now, and they have one of the most generational talents we've ever seen in Wemby. So like you said, no season wasted. I think that should be the motto for the Spurs, and they have to go after this, in my opinion. They have the draft capital to do it. They can unload some of that so that they can make the trade for marketing. And on top of that, yeah, getting rid of Calvin Johnson. I don't think, I think that is worth it and they need to do it. And they would go from being one of the bottom teams in the West automatically to being a true playoff contender. Maybe they wouldn't be a, a, a championship contender, but they would be, I, I think they could make problems in the West uh, just off one year. So I think you have to do it. Yeah. Every team needs a little buffer year mm -hmm. to get in the mix, get into that <laughs> squad. Chris Paul, redeem his value again. We'll see what happens. But folks, you guys are the best make as far. Let's know in the comments what you guys think. Again, if you made it this far in the video, Growing this channel, Courts I Die, just hit that subscribe button. Jack, any last words on the San Antonio Spurs trading for Markkinen, being a threat in the West next season? If they pull off this trade, get Markkinen, they're a real problem, and I'm excited to see what they do. For sure. Cheers.